Good morning, everyone. As always, place the cross on first. No matter what's going on in your life, one thing about Jesus and the Lord and the Holy Spirit is with you no matter what. Does it, does it mean every day of your life going to be pieces and cream? I say this all the time, but I reiterate the fact all the time because you're thinking. Most people are thinking, I give my life to God. When he say I'm going to give you a peace that surpasses all the understanding, he's going to give you peace during the storm. Yeah, your mindset's going to change. That don't mean the storm's not going to rage. That don't mean the rain is not going to pour. That don't mean people are going to stop talking about you. The Bible says, clear as day, you will be hated by many for my name's sake. So you might well get ready. Get used to the hate. Get used to that. Get used to this. You understand? But put your cross on. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, I thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for giving me rest through the night watches, Lord, sustaining me. Lord Jesus, I ask you to continue to work on my wife in a special way. Touch her, Lord Jesus. Guide her mind, her body, and her soul. Continue to touch her father-in-law, my father-in-law in a special way. Continue to keep watching with my kids. Continue to watch over the area I stay in. Continue to watch over my workplace. Send your angels, Lord Jesus. Guide me with your righteous right hand. Lead me on the path that you want me to go throughout this day. Lord Jesus, send forth your Holy Spirit into my heart and my soul so I can bring forth this word with all honesty and all truth, all knowledge that is given to me from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sunday I read a verse. And all these years I've been... I read the verse, I kind of understood it, but it's like I got some more. And I, I got some more and I got to tell you about it. This is a Mark chapter 10, starting with verse 17. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Now you better take that with a grain of salt. There's none good but God. For all we people, these people are like, hey, they're a good person. Nah. Good, good ain't going to get you into heaven. Jesus just said there's none good but God. Being a good person ain't going to work because there's no such thing. We all have a little sin, a little evil in us. That's why Jesus died on the cross for our sins because there's nobody perfect walking this earth. So good ain't going to get you nowhere. That's just a worldly term. He's a good person. Okay. You just read it from the horse's mouth. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy father and thy mother. He didn't go over all of them. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing that thou lackest, go thy way. Sell whatsoever thou hast and give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come. Take up the cross and follow me. So we know what taking up the cross means. That's a lot. Following up to Jesus, doing what he did, doing his work. And giving to the poor. And he was sad at this saying. And went away grievous, for he had great possession. So he was sad. You know, it's not like he wanted to do it. He was like, man, I got a lot of stuff. So he went away sad, like, man, I had it all wrong. And Jesus looked about him, round about, and said to his disciples, how hardly... Shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? And the disciples were astonished at his words, but Jesus answered again and said unto them, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? So you can't trust in riches. Get that? He said, How hard is it going to be hard for you that trust in riches? They go for me and anybody else that trust in how much money they got, the abundance they have. He said, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And I, <coughs> I'm not talking about filthy rich people. Rich can be anything. He said, if you have today's goods and you set up your brother that come to you, it don't matter. I ain't talking about millionaires. I'm talking about just waking up paycheck to paycheck and got some overflow. I'm not necessarily talking about the billionaires that walk the earth. And they were astonished out of Measure saying among themselves, who then can be saved? Why they said, why they were astonished at who then can be saved? 
Hmm. And Jesus looking upon them. With men, it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. So you need God. All us can fall under the sway of the deceitfulness of riches. We need God to help us. You understand? Yeah, I know the Ten Commandments. But I need the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, to let me know how to help. He said, with God, it's possible. So a rich man can enter into the kingdom of God with God. A rich man without God, the only way you can inherit the kingdom of God is with Jesus. There's no way around it. You can't just be a good person. There's no such thing. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. Now this the part, this the fruit. And Jesus said, answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that have left house or brother or sister or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels, but he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time. Let me stop right there. Hey, go back to the soul and the sea. What is Jesus talking about when he said a hundredfold? You got to remember what he was just talking about, the deceitfulness of riches, right? And people use this gospel right here to spread a prosperity message. They're not even about a prosperity in regards to material possession. It's about saving souls. Watch this. But he shall receive a hundredfold. Now in this time, houses, he ain't talking about giving you a bunch of houses. The Bible said, do not join house to house. When he's talking about houses, he's talking about you're going to save souls, houses, whole houses, and brethren, and sisters, and mothers, and children, and lands with persecution. And the world to come eternal life. But many that are first shall be last and are last first. Wow. Amazing. All these years, I never caught that. Because... It's been distorted so long that people use it. You're going to receive houses. Well, you got to understand what the gospel is about. What's the sower? The sower sows the word. He said, we're persecuted who spread the gospel with persecutions. You understand? You're going you to have you receive houses. What he told them to do? Go to houses and do what? Spread the gospel. Did he say every house they went to, they gained as far as it's theirs now? No, the houses that wanted to hear, they gained eternal life. The houses that, that want to hear did not. Do you understand? It's not about material possessions. The gospel has never been about material possessions. To whom much is given, much is required. Spiritual growth, people. It's always about spiritual growth. And the thing is, if God gives you funds, it's not necessarily always for you. Yeah, he know what you need, but he know what they need too. How many times you been down and out to somebody help you out with a lending hand? But you know, one time when riches and he said, the rich has many friends. The poor man is despised by his neighbor. Well, the Bible says, be not friendship with the world. So you got to understand what that means. The rich has many friends. When the love loves you, when the world loves you, be careful. So did they all... Uh, the ancestors to the false prophets <laughs> and the false teachers. You better be careful out there. You know, the sower and the seed. He said, if you don't understand this parable, how will you understand all parables? Only way you're going to understand the parable of the rich man and the camel's eye, I mean, the eye of a needle, how are you going to understand that if you don't understand the, the sower and the seed? And that's crazy. Jesus said, if you don't understand this parable, how will you understand all parables? So the soul and the seed is a very important parable that you need to grasp the concept of what it's about. He said, some came for this when those that hear the word and bear fruit. Some bring forth 20 fold, 30 fold, 100 fold. What are you talking about? Is he talking about money? Money is irrelevant. All right. What are you doing? What's your job as a follower of Christ? So is your God job to leave every house you leave to billionaires? <laughs> how to teach people how to get rich? No. He's trying to teach you rich how to be rich in heavenly things. You know, the word of God can be changed by man. But it cannot be changed by God. It can be taught so many different ways. But the word is supposed to do exactly what it does. 
He said gain houses and sisters and brothers. And so you mean to tell me? Okay, you can say, well, you, you go get houses. Well, do you are you gonna own your sister and brother? Are you gonna own your mother? <laughs> do the math. Or they're gonna make you them serve you. Nope. Go further on. He said, those who desire to be first might be late last. Either those who desire to minister, they minister. You serve people. It's not designed for people to serve you. So you are a servant of the Lord. Do you understand? That's what you do. That's your job. To serve the Lord and serve people. So if riches increase, what the, how the riches, what's riches supposed to do? You know, it's only so much you can get into one house. But you know this world, I see I move a lot of people. I'm going to be real with you, people. I move a lot of people. I know some people got to move because of jobs. Some people just move that they got accumulated so much stuff, so they build, a, they get another house that's big enough to accumulate that stuff. And then they get more stuff. Never content, just forever growing. Ever growing. More and more. More and more. Let me tell you something, people. You can build a house the size of lad people's stadium and not be happy. First of all, what you gonna do with all them rooms? You know what I'm saying? How big of a house do you want? You understand? How big? He said, be content with those things if you such have. You know, when I was growing up, my pastor at the time, I thought he would probably be in a mansion or something. But he stayed in Pritchard. And he stayed in like a two or three bedroom house that's probably old as I don't know what, him and his wife. He had an old live work truck. He had a Cadillac, don't get me wrong. I believe a preacher should, a man of God should have a decent way of transportation. Need a work truck too. Because you're going to be working. You're going to be going to people's houses and helping them out. Because you're here to serve as a minister of the Lord. Now, am I saying buy three Cadillacs? No. No, people. It's never been about prosperity. They'll use David. Hmm. David was king. He had to take care of a kingdom. Why do you think he prospered him? Because he prospered the kingdom. Joseph. Oh, Joseph was filthy rich. No, Joseph had to take care of nations. <laughs> when uh, the famine started in the land, when nothing was bearing fruit, and Egypt was. And God gave him a heads up. Hey, I'm going to teach you how to store some things. So when it's no food being grown, y'all will have food. And not just y'all, the people surrounding you. Oh, people, open your eyes. It's up to you to see the truth. It's up to you to acknowledge what the gospel is all about. Don't let these people fool you thinking it's about this when it's not. Let me pause and I will continue.